If I have anyone in this room today who knows you're looking forward to moving past where we were, then just look at somebody and tell them I am. While most persons, however, though are anchored in their hope and their excitement, there is yet another group, Bill, that has not rounded third and definitely is not headed toward home plate. There, are, there is another group of persons who are still rocking and reeling from what they faced, what they've encountered and what they are now forced to endure. They are yet hurting over what happened, over what they cannot seem to get past. Grandmama is dead. Mama sick. Their son or daughter gone. Their relationship crashed and burned in the last 12 months. Their children now need therapy. Help us, God, some of the parents do too. Relationships are fractured. Jobs have been ended. Money is tight. Some have lost their homes. Some have nearly lost their minds. Can I see by a show of hands to make sure I'm in the right church? The hands of those who know there were moments you almost lost it. Big time. We're not talking about a mild meltdown. We're talking about Chernobyl. We're talking about melting down and going crazy. Can I see the hands of those who almost lost it all? Like that song, I almost gave up. I was right at the edge. Don't push me because I'm, I'm about... I know there's some Furious Five folk in here. That's how we define part of the last months. The world as we knew it has been drastically altered. And to put it in one simple word, many people are still grieving, still trying to get over everything that they have been through over the last 18 months. They're grieving losses of all kinds, and it's harder than they ever imagined. Indeed, there are two songs being sung. One is the music of excitement, the hallelujahs and the shouts. And the other is a song of sadness and sorrow. Grief is a subject, Bill, that's been closeted for the last 12 months. We didn't have time to grieve. Didn't have time to feel bad. We, we had to bury it. God, I'm preaching to somebody in here now. We had to bury all the losses, all, all of the things we felt bad about. Can, can, can I be transparent? I, I'm a grandfather. I'm 71. My birthday passed. I lost two years of spending with my grandchildren when I have no clue how many years I have left. God, I wish I had a witness in here. I lost two years of them sitting by my knee. I lost two years of them saying, Papa, I feared and wondered would they forget me. I feared and wondered if the messages I was intended to teach would be lost for all eternity. My God, my brothers and sisters, we know about grieving. If I have anybody in here who has your own tale to tell, just say amen. amen. Help us, God. This is why this passage speaks to, speaks to me and I pray to you so loudly. It speaks of the master coming down from the Mount of Transfiguration and the crowd rushing out to see him. The text says the next day, when they came down from the mountain, 
a large crowd comes running to meet him. The, the, the crowd is anxious for the next big thing. They're, they're excited. Jesus in town. What's he going to do? We, we haven't seen Jesus for 18 months. We haven't been able to be in Mount Ararat for the last 15 months. Oh, God, we about to open. Oh, God, you going? Yeah, child. I'll be there. Yeah, baby, I got my mask. It say Mount Ararat. They say we got a social distance. I don't care what kind of distance. I'm going to be in the number. We ain't been in church in 18 months. I ain't heard the choir. The choir. I ain't heard the praise team. I haven't seen the dancers. I haven't seen Uncle Billy and Aunt Bubba. I'm coming to church. I'm going to be there, child. I got my new clothes ready. They ironed and pressed. I'm going to be there this Sunday. I'm going to be there first Sunday. I got somewhere to go second Sunday. But I'll be there first Sunday. This is the crowd that, when they heard, this is the crowd that been to the beaches during the summer and uh, flew all across the country, went everywhere. This is the happy, this is the crowd that been open when their body was closed. This is the crowd that had their own tailgate parties that, that were excited about just going there. This is the crowd that went to all the big funerals and then went to the people's funerals who died at those funerals. <laughs> Y'all know that crowd. They couldn't stay in the house. They were out everywhere, in the mall, in the street, at the party. They were on the news. Help me somebody. They heard Jesus is in town. Billy, it's going to be a healing service in Mount Airy. Pastor going to have the earl pouring it on people's heads. Oh, I'll be there for this. But this crowd that came on first Sunday, this crowd that came second Sunday, this crowd that showed up on the second Sunday in October, was not just the crowd that was waiting to get back in church to do all the churchy stuff. Oh, hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Oh, They came running to Jesus. They, they see the doors are open. They come running and they ran to him. Straight at him. He is the source of this. He is how it's all going to flow. They come running. They surround him. This is a crowd. This is a large crowd. But they are not alone. Oh, no. They think they are. This is the praise and worship crowd. This is the crowd that loves church. Nudge somebody and ask them, you in that crowd? Ain't no crime. Say, yeah. Yeah, child, I love church. I wake up smelling church. I, I, I'm always at church. I love being at church. This is the crowd that loves church. The problem is, or maybe it's not the problem, the reality is, Bill, that they are not the only people there. The crowd that loves church ain't the only crowd that's coming to see Jesus. The crowd that's waiting for 5,000 to be fed with a little boy's lunch crowd that's waiting to see him walk on water or even ascend and be transfigured. They're not the only crowd there. The crowd that's waiting for some major moment of ministry to happen. They're not the only crowd. There's another crowd there. They're kind of quiet, but one man jumps up. He said, I'm going to speak for this second crowd that's in this building. We're we all in here, but I'm going to speak because there's another crowd of folk in here who ain't waiting on the praise team to sing. They ain't waiting on the ushers to usher and to march. They're not waiting for the preacher to go, no, I no longer will make a way. They didn't get up this morning for that. There's another crowd in this midst 
And it's symbolized by this one man who, while all these folk are crowding around Jesus, Bill, he jumps up and says, teacher! 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 He's not one of the people who goes off regularly in church that everybody has become accustomed to. You know, in everybody's church, there's one. Oh! You know, you say, who's that? Somebody do it. Oh, don't worry about that. That's so and so. He's not that person. Teacher! Can you? He gets Jesus' attention. Can you help me? I'm not here for some overflow. I'm here with a specific request. Can you help me? Not can you sing to me. Not can you sit beside me. Not can you slap five with me. Not can you woo me with the intellectualism of your arguments. I am here for one specific reason. I got a problem. And I just need to know, can you help me? I have been traumatized by what I've been living through. God, I wish I could talk to some folk who have been traumatized. Come on, I know we're in church and we're trying to act churchified, but I need to know, are there some folk here who know something about trauma? I'm not talking about just situations, but something that ripped you apart like, like a dog's claws going through your spirit. I need to know, are there some people here who've had some sleepless nights because you could not figure out the crazy reality you were living through. I need to know, are there some people in this house right now who have hurt so deeply on the inside but had to front and perpetrate so that people would not know the depth of the pain you would, come on, don't play. Don't front in church today. I need you to move beyond the crowd that's just here for the show and be a part of the crowd who knows something about the pain and suffering that life has put on you. I don't care if you saved to the bone and sanctified to the marrow. Each and every one of us has some moments and some experiences in life that leave us traumatized, that make us wonder, can we keep on keeping on? And if you're in here today, I need you to fess up. I need you to be in that crowd. I need you to open your mouth and let it be known, this is my problem. Traumatized.